Good morning, Aldersgate family. I'm going to give you a couple of minutes to continue logging on. Hopefully, Daryl can see when people are joining. He may not know what he's looking for, but he'll catch on. Good morning, Aldersgate family. Welcome to Facebook. Please comment in if you cannot hear us so that we can make adjustments. Uh, please let us know that you're watching. Comment. Uh, today, I hope we will be a little bit more interactive than we usually are. Uh, this is going to be an informal service. So, welcome. I see we're having some difficulties. Hang on just a second, and I'm going to step away for just a moment. I'll be right back. to go try going to Aldersgate Sumter find our church Facebook page, site and on our Facebook site you should be able to scroll and find us we are on live right now I know at least seven people are already watching so if those seven will give us a little bit of time for the we're up to 11 uh, so if those seven or to 11 will give us just a few more minutes. We'll let people keep joining. Um, in the comments, please let us know if this is coming across loud and clear because we do want you to be able to uh, hear things. We're trying a couple of uh, new things this morning. Uh, we're using a mic and an NDI camera to, to use eCam to broadcast you to you this morning. Uh, so that we can hopefully share some things with you that we otherwise would not be able to share with you. Okay, good to know that all is well on that end. Uh, continue to gather. Kathy is looking to see if uh, she can see us. And when I know that she can see us, then I'm, I'm going to be hopeful that we're all on and all gathered. Uh, but this is kind of an informal start so that we can uh, get together and, and discuss this. Uh, this was what I had planned to be a big Sunday. Uh, we were looking forward to Epiphany. We are still in the season of Christmas. And um, since we are still in the season of Christmas, we're going to have a little bit of Christmas music this morning. What I invite you to do is, um, as you gather, comment, let us know you're here. We'll give folks about another minute. Um, I can't see it. Kathy's not seeing it. Can you get to the Aldersgate page? Are you on? <clears throat> Daryl, can you look on your phone and see? Not anymore. the trials of technology. I know some of you are finding it, so I, I'm, uh, I'm happy that some of you have found us this morning. But welcome. It is a rainy Sunday morning. Uh, some of you don't ever get to see what my office looks like. This is my office. So, um, are you trying to broadcast at the same time, Kathy? Yeah, can I do that? No. Okay, then I won't do that. <laughs> it should be broadcasting if we have people who are seeing it. If we got people doing it, that's cool. Um, 16 minutes. We're up to 16. Keep, keep logging on there. Um, again, what you're looking for is Aldersgate... Sumter, our Facebook page. Once you get to our Facebook page, you should be able to find the live stream. And on that live stream, 
basically it's where we're going to share some things this morning. We're going to have a modified worship service. But good morning. Let's go on ahead and get started with worship. First of all, welcome. We're glad you're here with us. We are delighted to have you with us. We had a situation where we learned that someone tested positive for COVID on Monday. And according to conference recommendations, that means that we need to not be sharing uh, in in-person worship today. Therefore, we are virtual. Uh, we miss being in person with you, but we value making sure that folks are as protected as possible. We want to take care of one another, and therefore, we are jumping in this way, and we will hopefully be back in person next week. Please let us know if you find out that you have COVID. Um, I was tested three times within the last week. I tested negative all three times, but I have had a cold. So we certainly understand there's lots of other things going on out there, but we do know that we have had congregation members who have COVID and when I spoke to David Shoemaker this morning, he added two people to our prayer list who are really struggling with COVID right now, really having a hard time. So please be in prayer for all of those who are battling COVID. We will have installation of officers next week. If something happens and we are not present together, we will install officers the following week. But please join us online, or hopefully next week in person. This morning, let us prepare our hearts that we might go to God in worship. We begin by lighting a candle and remembering that however we are gathered, God is present with us and that God loves us. To make that transition, let's begin in prayer. Gracious and merciful God, pour out your Holy Spirit on us as we gather not in one place but scattered in our homes. Remind us once again that it is your love that has the power to connect us no matter where we are. It was the power of your love that connected wise men from far away to Jesus and as we are connected to you in Jesus Christ we are all bound together for the gift of your grace make us one in love with one another one in love with you grant us the ability this morning to shift and pause to realize that you are present with us and to settle our hearts through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. To help us settle, I want us to remember that yes, we are still in the season of Christmas, but we are looking forward to the epiphany today. The 12 days of Christmas that last from Christmas Day to the Epiphany. The Epiphany being the day that we remember that the wise men came to visit Jesus and bring gifts. So we're going to try to let you see a virtual United Methodist choir. I'm going to step away and hopefully you will see the choir. If there's a problem hearing the choir, please comment.
Okay, now hopefully I am back with you uh, as we try some new technology this morning. I hope you enjoyed hearing United Methodists from all over the world sing together. Today, our scripture is Matthew chapter 2, verses 1 through 12. This is the familiar story of the Magi, the wise men. In the time of King Herod, after Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea, wise men from the east came to Jerusalem, asking, Where is the child who has been born King of the Jews? For we observed his star at its rising, and have come to pay him homage. When King Herod heard this, he was frightened, and all Jerusalem with him. And calling together all the chief priests and scribes of the people, he inquired of them where the Messiah was to be born. They told him, In Bethlehem of Judea, for so it has been written by the prophet. And you, Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, are by no means least among the rulers of Judah. For from you shall come a ruler who is to shepherd my people Israel. Then Herod secretly called for the wise men and learned from them the exact time when the star had appeared. Then he sent them to Bethlehem, saying, Go and search diligently for the child, and when you have found him, bring me word so that I may go and pay him homage. When they had heard the king, they set out, and there ahead of them went the star that they had, been, had seen at its rising, until it stopped over the place where the child was. When they saw that the star had stopped, they were overwhelmed with joy. On entering the house, they saw the child with Mary his mother, and they knelt down and paid him homage. Then, opening their treasure chests, they offered him gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. And having been told in a dream not to return to Herod, they left for their own country by another road. This is the word of God for us, the people of God. Thanks be to God. I'm fascinated by the story of the wise men and the way that they followed a star. They allowed something to guide them. But they were not totally fixed on just the star. The star also required them to discern where they needed to go, who they needed to talk to, and still be open to God's direction. Sometimes I put the GPS system in my car on. It's just automatic. And right now it just car plays so that I see the GPS up anytime I want. And I choose whether or not to follow it. A number of years ago, when we still used one of those GPS units that wasn't our phone, Daryl took a business trip. And he got to his hotel and he was trying to get to the gas station nearby to get a snack before he checked in. And the voice on the GPS told him to turn here. Except for turn here was impossible because there was a median, a concrete median. And Daryl kept going around trying to figure out how to get into the gas station. And each time the GPS voice would come up, recalculating, turn here recalculating. Turn here. Daryl said you could almost hear the frustration in the voice. Even though it was just the computerized voice, he was having to make decisions based on what he saw in that moment. 
And that's what was happening with the wise men. They had to make decisions based on what they encountered. They thought they were looking for a king, so they went to look for the king. And they found Herod, who was clueless about this new king. Not only was he clueless about this new king, he needed more information from them. There was something suspicious in the way he said, come back and tell me so I can go pay him homage. Instead, the wise men listened to the voice in the dream that told them to go back another way. What's directing your life right now? Yesterday was New Year's Day, and each New Year's Day, I do something with the West a prayer in the a covenant prayer in the Wesleyan tradition. It's a prayer that says, "Let me have all things. Let me have nothing. Let me be exalted. Let me be brought low. Let me suffer." It's a prayer that says, God, do with me as you need to do with me. But each year I put a picture behind it. Last year I chose a snowy fork in the road. And in that snowy fork in the road, there was the realization that I get some choice here. God directs, God gives direction but I have some choice as to whether I will take the path that God is calling me to take or whether I will go my own way. And sometimes God calls us to take paths that we would not choose for ourselves. I wonder what the wise men thought. Why are we supposed to go to Bethlehem? Herod doesn't even know about this key. We've come this far, and the king does not know that a new king has been born. Surely they question their direction. But they found the child and they worshiped. We continue to find ways to worship. In a world where we have struggled with all kinds of issues from the pandemic, we have still found ways to worship. We're worshiping this morning. We've lit a candle. We've heard music. We've heard scripture. And we're going to respond. But how do we know when we're responding to God? I think some of this requires that we not be satisfied with, oh, this is it, I'm done. We are on a constant journey with God. And sometimes there are tools, spiritual disciplines that will help us make this journey. First and foremost, prayer and scripture Help us stay connected to God in ways that allow us to become aware of what God is doing in our lives and ways God is creating opportunities for us to use our gifts where they meet the world's needs. One of the things that is required in many spiritual disciplines is an ability to reflect back, an ability to think. And sometimes that's hard for us to do. One of the practices that many churches use on Epiphany Sunday is to pass out stars or to let you pick stars. The stars have a word on the opposite side. 
I just pulled this one for myself just a few minutes ago. It says breathe. So this year I will think about the word breathe and I will meditate about what does that mean in my life of faith? What does it mean to breathe? Last year my star word was thankful. I have found this a year of being more focused on what am I thankful for? I'm thankful for the appointment I left and all the ways Surfside changed my life. I am thankful for my new appointment at Aldersgate United Methodist Church and all the ways I am meeting wonderful people and anticipating wonderful changes. You see, God is at work. And when we start focusing on something like thankful, each day we begin to think about it a little bit more. Breathe. It's easy for me to get caught up in the busyness and need to slow down and pause. To take that moment to listen for God. For me, breathe is a reminder to do what the wise men did. Breathe is that reminder to create a space that allows me to hear God say, no, go a different way. Some words are easy. Some words are hard. Some words we may get and question, how is this going to help us? Words like resist or know someone who had the word ordinary. And they struggled with the word ordinary. Sometimes words like breathe that we think as soon as we pick it up, oh, I know what to do with this, become the most challenging words because they force us to live out what we know we already need to do. And we begin to see other ways. Breathe. first song that comes to mind when I pick up it is this is breathe on me breath of God not me breathing but God breathing I pray that God breathes life into our journeys just like he breathed life into the journey of the wise men there's a table with stars on it set up in Brooks' office. I also have a whole stack of car, of stars that we can pick from. If you would like for us to pick a card for you right now, please go on ahead and send us a message. Uh, if you want to come in and pick up your card later, that's great. There's several ways we can get this to you. We can take a picture, and I'll send you a picture of it this afternoon by direct message or by um, text message if I have your phone number. One of the things I've done in the past is I have made a picture of my star, the background on my phone. Find a way to keep it before you. Maybe you post it on your refrigerator. Maybe you maybe you use it as your bookmark in your Bible this year. As I was looking for stars this year, I was looking for plain paper. And Brooke said, no, let's use glitter paper. Let's use glitter paper. Let's let God's light shine and guide us through 2022. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Daryl's already getting people asking for us to pick, so we are going to pick some stars. I'm going to scoot over to the computer. Uh... And we're going to leave you just looking at the wise men. I ask you to meditate for just a moment. I'm going to try to get a version of 
uh, we three keys up for you to listen to as you meditate. Unfortunately, I cannot get to uh, the version of We Three Kings I wanted you to hear. I will post a link in the comments to the video so that you can go back and listen to that. We talk about responding to God, whether it's taking our star, whether it's giving our offering. And I invite you to give an offering whether it's online or sending it into church, go to our church website, aldersgatesumpter.org, and contribute. Figure out how you are going to live into the life God is calling to you to live this week. Respond to what God has done and grow in your faith as we step into 2022, let us remember that sometimes the journey is long and has many different paths. The wise men traveled from afar. They found what they were looking for, but they were told to go back a different way. Encountering Jesus changes the way we go forward. And so I ask for you to consider how encountering Jesus will change the way you go forward. Let us pray. Gracious and merciful God, this isn't what we normally think of as worship. But wherever we stop and we put you first and we lift your name in praise, we are worshiping. We ask that you would use the rest of our day in ways that shape our faith so that worship isn't just an event, 
but the worship is the way we live. Guide our steps. That we might follow the light of Jesus Christ in our homes, in our offices, in the steps of our everyday lives. And may we come back together worshiping you, knowing that you are what bind us together more so than any place, the gift of Jesus Christ who gave his life for us, binds us together. Amen. Happy New Year. Happy New Year. Let's finish, was it in Broadway? Yes.